Hey everyone, in this video we're going to be going through the third part of Brad Westfall's really excellent series of tutorials on getting the most out of React and Friends. I'll have a link in the description below, of course, to his tutorials, to the corresponding repo on GitHub, and so on. Shout out to Brad for making this really excellent material. Shout out to Facebook for making React the awesome tool that it is. Shout out to you for being a wonderful audience and hitting that like and subscribe button. <laughs> Uh, all right, in so the first video was about the structure of a React app. The second one was about making content dynamic and about passing data from one place to another. Now this last one is taking it to the next level with something called Redux. Now, if you're like me, back in the day you were hearing React came out, eventually you were hearing about React in Flux, eventually you were hearing about React and Redux, and you're probably thinking to yourself, well, it seems like there's no end to JavaScript developers and their propensity to prod each other with more and more random JS, right? And, and while that may be true, there's actually a good reason for Redux, and we're going to get into that right now after a high-level overview of what it is and why it exists. Think about passing state data to child components. We did that one in the last video. And it was pretty straightforward, but it was also a contained example where the data generally needed to flow one way to one place. Imagine you have a, actually a really complex app where you have state data flowing backwards and forwards, up and down, you know, the, the tree of components. Think of a form, for example. That'd be a case where your downstream components, like a presentation component, needs to send data back up the stream to a container, back up to a backend and whatnot. Now, if you were trying to cook up a way to pass data around like that, let me stop you there. It's a really bad idea, and, and it doesn't take much imagination to see why, right? Imagine the headache to try to update states across many components. It's a lot of writing references to each other, you know, saying in five places, hey, listen for changes on this other place's state, and so on. Instead, the idea here is that you'd have a global state, and when that gets updated, well, since all the components app-wide are listening to the global state, they get updated too, which is genius. So before, we just had components for aggregation and transformation, on, on the one type of components and then presentation for the other type of components. Now we're going to be sliding in this tertium quid element coming in called a state and it's going to play really nicely with the other pieces. Actually it's a store. I take that back. It's a store. So check out the final version of the site and notice a, a couple things. The main new feature is that the, the user section, well, and the widget section too, accommodates search now. So if we type in Ryan, we get that. If we get rid of it, we get all of them back. Now, before we think of what a search entails, let's frame it in the context of how Redux actually works with state. Imagine your state is a JSON object, but it could be anything like a string or array, etc. Think of a JSON object and the way it, that it gets created and updated in, in the Redux world are through the following four methods. There's dispatch, subscribe, get state, and replace reducer. Now the way the first one, dispatch works, dispatch, the way that works is that you call it and you pass it something called an action. The action is what you want it to do. So how, like what does that mean? And, and how does that, and how does that work? So an action, quote unquote, is an object with potentially two keys, or, or at least two elements to it. The first key is called type, and you set this based on how you want the store to handle it. In the website's tutorial, they have one called add user. Add user is the, is the type of action that's getting done to the store. Then the second key, or the second bit, uh, of other information, whether it's an object or whether it's an array or some other data type. The second bit is the actual information that's being handed to the state. 
So for the example online, they have the key user, and then the value is another key value pair for name and Dan, respectively. Once that payload hits the state, the, the state will know, the, the store will know how to handle the request because the type's value, and it'll know what to handle because the information is stored in the rest of the object, the action object, to be more specific. So the action gives us how to handle information and what to handle. Now we need an actual way to send it to the state, and that's through something called a reducer. A reducer takes two inputs, which is the state and an action, and it updates the state according to the instructions of the action and returns a new state to you. Now, why don't I actually show you this? This is on the tutorial. So, so here we have a reducer, it takes the state, it takes an action. And if the action type is add user, you can slide it in like that. Now this picture here is sort of lying to you because it's preferable to copy stores and return a new copy instead. So the one that you should actually be emulating is this one down here in your reducers. That was kind of a lot, but you know, and I, and I recommend going through this a couple times yourself just because a lot is going on. Although if you do get it the first time, maybe you're a genius or maybe I'm a great explainer. Who knows? Be sure to like and subscribe. Just, I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> so we're going to be looking at, at how to make the user search function work. And to give you a, a familiar frame of reference, we're going to start with the router.js. So you recognize this, you've been here before in the last couple videos. So we're going to start here and then we're going to dive, dive right in. You can see from lines 19 through 21 that a couple components are in play, which given the fact that we are at slash users, given the fact that we're at slash users, the ones that are going to be in play are the search layout container and the user list container, as well as their constituent views. So keep, in, keep, keep that in mind for later. Next up, this is the actual store. This is where we use, where we tell Redux to make a store. This is 100% the easiest thing to wrap your head around for the whole example that we have coming up. This just instantiates the store, makes it available everywhere, and so on. Now, it's important to note here that when you create the store, you are passing the reducers that you create elsewhere so that the store has instructions for how to handle actions that come in. So next up is the search layout container. And we have something called map state to props. And that makes your global state, the state that's in the store, it, it makes those available as additional props that can be used in other components like search layout, like this one. Now in search layout, on line 13, where it has props.children, since we're on the users page, the children here is the users list, which has access to the global state via the props.users, which it loops through here, right? Props.users loops through. You can see that it makes rows for each one with the link, the delete button, and so on. And this display component is of course supported by the container component of the matching name user list container. That gives you an idea of how the users show up on the page, right? So now let's slide over to the search form, which is searchform.js and which is supported by, wait for it, the matching names component, search form container js, right there. So helpful. So we've got the view here, we've got the logic here. Take a snack break if you need to and come back because we've set up all of the, the context that we need and it's, it's time to see you know, how deep the Redux rabbit hole goes. All right, time to shine with Redux. So line 12, right? You, this, is, this is the search bar. You type in the search, you click the search buttons. When that happens, you are triggering the search function from the parent, this one, this search. Now, what that does 
it sets a variable called query to be the value of the form field via the return value of the get query function, this get query function. It takes the query variable and passes it to the search users on the API, user API.js, and returns the result. Now, what does it do with that result, right? And this is this is the really, really crucial part because this is where we start the process of actually updating the state with Redux. So it takes the response and sends a dispatch call to the store via an action called get user success, which is this one. Now remember that an action wraps the response data with a type that will tell the store how to handle it. So we're passing the user data right on through. We're passing them right on through, but also adding the key type and the value get user success. Now that the store is receiving the updated data, it looks to the reducer to see how it should handle it. And it sees that if the type is in fact get user success, which it is here, it should update the store such that the data associated with the key users is the response data from the API call. And because the user list view is subscribed to the data on the store at the key users, the list view gets updated automatically. And that's how your search function works, my friends. So as always, I hope you found walking through this with me helpful. Be sure to ask questions so we can grow better together, and I'll see you all in the next one.